Venom makes its way into theaters Friday, but the reviews of the Tom Hardy flick may have poisoned its big debut. Marvel's latest title sees Hardy take on one of Spider-Man's deadliest foes, previously played in Spider-Man 3 by Toy for Grace. The film sees journalist Eddie Brock writing an expose on a Silicon Valley tech company and becoming exposed to an alien symbiote that merges with his body, giving him a villainous alter ego. Riz Ahmed plays tech magnate Carlton Drake, while Michelle Williams is Brock's ex-girlfriend Anne. The Hollywood Reporter's own critic Todd McCarthy suggests that Venom is a step backward for Marvel. At a time when the Marvel Universe is both expanding adventurously and wrapping up other storylines, Venom feels like a throwback, a poor second cousin to the all-stars that have reliably dominated the box office charts for most of this century, he says. McCarthy was also less than engaged by the central character, who he called a dope and eager doofus. Hardy has always had a terrific screen bearing and presence, but this may be his least interesting role and performance, our critic writes. He instead suggested that the movie showed Hardy would play an amazing Harvey Weinstein. Laura Prudhomme of IGN took issue with what she cites as the film's lack of proper pacing and tone, concluding that Venom ultimately seems confused and muddled. The film, she writes, is a muddled hodgepodge that isn't sure whether it wants to be comedic or take its troubled anti-hero way too seriously. Prudham laments the lack of decent writing for actors, including Williams and Ahmed, but compliments Hardy's performance, writing, The film's few bright spots are largely due to Hardy's interplay with himself. This is the second time he's played dual roles following 2015's underwritten but ambitious legend. It's frustrating to imagine how much better the movie might have been if the creative direction had matched Hardy's obvious passion for the character. Michael Nordine from IndieWire meanwhile was one of the few critics to enjoy the film, saying that its incongruities ultimately feel more like a feature than a bug. Nordheim praised the film's attempt to create a buddy comedy dynamic between Brock and the symbiote, even if it ultimately fell flat. Not all of Eddie and Venom's exchanges land as intended, but those that do are genuinely funny. Over time, their relationship even becomes endearing in its own way, which comes as such a pleasant surprise it's almost enough to recommend the movie on its own, he wrote. Charles Pulliam Moore of io9 says the film strikes an imperfect balance between two extremes, sticking too close to or straying too far from Marvel source material. And that's a testament to Sony's belief that audiences are going to want to watch a charmingly disheveled Tom Hardy murder and eat people in the name of twisted justice in this movie and any potential sequels. The Verge's Brian Bishop called the film a bizarre and baffling mess in his review, writing that Venom is a train wreck of a movie, mixing and matching wildly dissonant tones, bizarre plot contrivances, and a truly unique lead performance. However, Bishop did praise Hardy for his lead performance, enthusing, Hardy is always watchable no matter the role, but there's so much to take in here that it almost feels like he's putting on a one-man show. He builds his character almost entirely out of idiosyncrasies, and if the audience isn't entertained by Brock's odd mannerisms in one scene, odds are they'll find Hardy employing an entirely new set of tricks in the next. And finally, the LA Times' Justin Chang compared the film to other recent superhero affairs, saying, Next to the much more visually and narratively elaborate entertainments that make up the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or even compared with other snarky anti-hero movies like Deadpool, Venom feels like pretty weak poison. To read more of what the critics are saying about Venom, which hits theaters October 5th, head to THR.com. For The Hollywood Reporter News, I'm Lindsay Rodriguez.